and welcomed to the pans this that and the other the reason why it's called this that and the other is it can be about any subject and today is about my cameraman's hobby my cameraman is very very talented at building um, models uh, airplanes plastic airplane kits but actually in a part two or follow on on this he's actually even more brilliant at doing very small scale miniature ships scratch built but anyway today this afternoon we thought we would turn things over to uh, some of his model airplanes and um, I will let him take over cameraman well thank you pans okay um, as the pans has alluded I enjoy building model aircraft um, a, a section of history that interests me the most is the Second World War um, the epitome of the piston engine uh, warplane and today I'm going to concentrate on some of the models that I have that of aircraft that took part in a aerial action that's known as the Battle of Britain. This took place in the summer and fall of 1940. France had just fallen and the Germans were at the height of their successes and it looked like they were going to try and invade England and about the only thing that stood between them and marching up Whitehall was the English Channel and the Royal Air Force. So here we have some aircraft models of airplanes that took part in the uh, um, on the British side in the uh, Battle of Britain. They're in a scale of what's called 1 to 144. That means one inch on the model represents 144 inches or 12 feet on the aircraft. So this is half the size of the popular 1 to 72 scale. Um, but the nice thing is they don't take up as much space. So without further ado, the first aircraft that I want to concentrate on was a fighter aircraft called the Hawker Hurricane. Now this was developed in the mid-1930s. It was really a transition from the um, biplanes of the early 30s um, it still had a lot of the construction features of those biplanes, but it was a new monoplane. It was the first aircraft in the Royal Aircraft, or excuse me, Royal Air Force inventory that could exceed 300 miles an hour in level flight. It was really considered um, pretty hot when it first came out. Um, at the time of the Battle of Britain, it made up about two thirds of Fighter Command's uh, air strength, and hence that's why I have two of them here because the other third was made up of what can only be considered as one of the most immortal aircraft of the Second World War, which is the Supermarine Spitfire. Now, the Spitfire began development in around 1936, and it's known for its beautiful shape. I mean, with the elliptical wings that it had, it was one of those airplanes that just looked right. At the time of the battle, again, as I said, it only made up about a third of the uh, fighter strength. Uh, and so most of the aircraft shot down, most of the German aircraft shot down, were shot down by hurricanes. But for some reason, the Spitfire captured the public's imagination. And the Spitfire was a bit more of a developed aircraft. So it had a lot more, or a bit more of an advanced, let me put it that way, uh, design. And it had a lot of development margin in it. Whereas the Hurricane, which was kind of like a big, heavy draft horse, it pretty much run the course of how far they could develop it. The other model I have over here is of an aircraft called the Ferry Battle. Now, this was a light bomber. Um, they had not done very well in the Battle of France. They got shot down in droves. And you can see it's a rather large airplane that had exactly the same engine as the fighters. So it was large, lumbering, slow. It had a three-man crew. Um, I mean, it. they tried their best, but a lot of them got lost and shot down. During the Battle of Britain, the survivors were being held in reserve as essentially a last-ditch kamikaze effort, if you will, if the Germans actually had... Uh, commenced an invasion, but fortunately that was not uh, required of them. Um, some of the other aircraft that took part on the British side, but are not modeled in this scale. Some of them would be such as the Bolton Paul Defiant, which was a turret fighter 
which unfortunately for the British didn't do very well, nor any of their um, bombers that Bomber Command was using at the time, such as the Wellington, the Hampton, or the Whitley. So maybe those might have to be scratch built. So anyway, that's it for the British aircraft that took part in the Battle of Britain and that are in my model collection. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cameraman. Uh, the next one will be uh, with the German aircraft. Yeah, the Germans. The Germans, because you have more German aircraft built than you have British, which well, I have gone, I commented on that with you in the past. Well, that's because the Germans had many different types. So almost all of the German types that took part, I've got a model of. And we'll address those in the next section. We will. And uh, if you live in the UK, of course, there are, uh, there's a plethora now of British museums, aviation museums that have um, developed since I left England over, what, 30 odd years ago now. Uh, there is actually a Battle of Britain um, museum down in Kent. I forget whereabouts in Kent. You can look it up. And last but not least, I'm wearing this bomber jacket, not to make this video look any better. It's because it's freaking cold out there. We have snow again. Um, and in the UK, it's probably zero degrees centigrade. So actually, I'm quite warm. I might keep this on for the rest of the day in the house. So thank you very much, Mr. Cameraman. And thank to you. everybody out there, the pans here, I do hope you've enjoyed. If so, please like the button share and subscribe. Thank you.